Hello again. This is Math 2232 coming to you from the College of DuPage. And this is the conclusion of the lecture entitled Integration by Parts. As always, please be an active learner as you watch this video. When we adjourned last time, you were in the process of evaluating this. If you completed this, uh, congratulations. Uh, if not, I will give you an opportunity to do it uh, now. Uh, you know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, so uh, uh, we could break this up uh, into the sum of integrals by distributing the cosine, but you still would have 3t cosine t over 4, so you would be doing an integration by parts anyway, so we're going to just do it the, uh, this way uh, instead. Uh, so we're going to let u equal 3t plus 5. That means that du is equal to 3 times dt. And dv is everything left. I let this be u, so the rest of the stuff is dv. So that's cosine t over 4 dt. And uh, the integral of that then is 4 sine t over 4. Again, if you take this derivative, you would find that, yes, indeed, you do get this. Or if you take the differential, yes, indeed, uh, you do get this. So you can check to see that that, in fact, was correct. Although you probably want to be doing that in your head by now. So the integral of u dv is v du minus uh, the uh, integral of um, u, or excuse me, v du, and that would be this, and so now I have to integrate this to complete the problem, uh, and what happens is the uh, antiderivative of the sine of u is the cosine of u, I have another factor of 4 in there, uh, and, or actually is the minus cosine, so minus a minus is a plus, so at the end of the day, uh, my solution is 4, 3t plus 5, in parentheses, sine of 4t plus 48 cosine t over 4 plus c, and that's the constant of integration. Is another problem for you to give a go. Evaluate the following integral. This is the uh, indefinite integral of w squared times sine of 10w dw. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Again, I realized that by letting uh, u be this polynomial, it will get simpler. So uh, u is equal to w squared, and du then is 2w dw. That means everything else has to be dv, and if I integrate dv, I get v is minus 1 over 10 cosine 10w. Again, you want to do this quickly, but you can always just check to see if the differential of this, in fact, does give you that, and it does. So the integral of u dv is going to be uv minus the integral of u, uh, the integral of v du, rather, and that's what you get here. Again, you should follow all these calculations yourself. It helps you along the way in case you didn't get it right the first time. But now you see this one is good to go. But here I need to integrate again. And I have that w there, which means I'm going to have to integrate by parts twice. So I'm taking this one and I'm going to integrate this one by parts. So I'm going to let u equal w. That means du is equal to dw. dv is going to be everything else except the w. So it's cosine 10w dw. And when I integrate that, I get 1 over 10 sine of 10w. Uh, now, make sure I'm putting that where I belong, because you see the thing I was integrating was this. So I have this term plus 1 fifth times this integral. And when I do this one, I'm going to get the new uv minus the integral of v du, and I get this. I have to simplify this, combine like terms, and so on and so forth. Make sure you follow the algebra, but at the end of the problem, the answer is that this is minus w squared over 10 cosine 10w plus w over 50 sine 10w plus 1 over 500 cosine uh, 10w uh, plus c. Now, sometimes when students come into the um, 
uh, Learning Commons and I'm working in there, uh, they'll ask me a problem that's like this and I always have to ask them, uh, what course are you in? Because you see there is a Calc 1 way to do this problem and there is a Calc 2 integration by parts way to do this problem and I'm going to ask you to do both of them. And so uh, part A, you're doing integration by parts, and part B, you're using a standard Calc 1 substitution. So evaluate the following integral, the indefinite integral of x times the square root of x plus 1 dx. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Well, by parts, the way to proceed then is to let u equal x, then du is equal to dx. dv is everything except the x, so it is the square root of x plus 1 dx. And when I integrate it, I get this. Now that's looking a little formidable, but at least I knew how to do it. And so the integral then is uv minus v du. Uh, the integral of v du, and uh, when I perform that integration, I want add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, do the simplification. So what I get is, this is 2 thirds x times x plus 1 whole to the 3 halves minus 4 over 5. This is x plus 1 to the 5 halves plus a constant of integration. Now, uh, <clears throat> you also could have done this using a calc 1 substitution. And you see, if you try to let u equal x plus 1, you say, yeah, but I have a, uh, a x times u, and this, but, um, and du is dx. But what you have to realize is that when I say u is equal to x plus 1, that means x is equal to u minus 1. And so you really did two substitutions. But when you substitute, you get this as the expression. This is homogeneous in u which means I can distribute and integra uh, integrate. I distribute the u to the 1 half across getting this. Make sure you understand these calculations. Then I perform uh, term by term integration getting this. And then I back substitute uh, this original substitution and I get this expression. Now, if you look at this expression and this expression, they don't look exactly the same. I have to make sure I have chosen the constant of integration the same, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, pretend I chose the same constant of integration. I'm just going to see what happens if I take the difference between the two. So I'm taking this one minus this one, and the c's cancel out. And when I do all the calculation, I end up with zero. You should follow this algebra because it is instructive for you to do so. But you see the answer can look different, but still be correct. And I always check both of them. Here's another problem for you to consider. Evaluate the following integral. The um, <clears throat> indefinite integral of the natural logarithm of x dx. You know what to do. I hope you do. Um, let's see how you did. Now, if you tried this one saying, well, I'm going to let uh, u be 1 and dv be everything there, you end up with the same problem that you started with, and you don't know how to find that antiderivative. So we have to do this one the other way, or at least we'll try that, and this will work. We don't crash and burn this way. We let u equal the natural logarithm of x, and we let dv equal dx. A lot of times students ask me when I teach this in the classroom, can I do this? And the answer is yes, you can. So then du is 1 over x dx, and v, if I integrate 1 dx, I just get x. So the integral then is uv minus the integral of v du. Well, x times 1 over x is going to be 1, and so I get this as my final answer. Here's another problem. I'm asking you to evaluate the following integral. The uh, indefinite integral of x to the fifth times the uh, square root of x cubed plus 1 dx. You know what to do. 
let's see how you did. Now, uh, you might start uh, by saying, well, I might have to integrate five, by part five times, but I'll start with this is uh, x to the fifth and this is dv. However, that's not going to work uh, because you can't easily compute this. So you have to do something else. And um, there's some trial and error here, but you're going to split it up this way. If you let u equal x cubed, that means I've used three factors of x here, but I still have x squared that's in the rest of it. So you see x to the fifth is x cubed times x squared. So I can split it up this way. I let u be this, du is going to be that. That means dv is everything except what I took for u. So it is x squared, the square root of x cubed plus one uh, dx. And I can integrate this. I can get u be what's inside here. And I get that v, and you should verify this for yourself, is 2 over 9, and that is uh, going to be x cubed plus 1 whole raised to the 3 halves. And so now uh, you know what v is, you know what u is, so this is going to be then, uh, this integral is going to be uv minus the integral of v du. Now this one is an integral that we can calculate because if I let u be x cubed plus 1, there's going to be a factor of x squared, and magic will happen when I do that calculation. And so the final answer that you should have gotten for this was 2 over 9 x cubed times x cubed plus 1 whole to the 3 halves minus 4 over 45 uh, x cubed plus 1 whole to the 5 halves plus c. Here's another problem for you to do. Consider to evaluate the following integral. This is going to be the indefinite integral of e to the theta times cosine theta d theta. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Well, you have to split this up. And uh, to tell you the truth, it will work um, either way. So I'm going to suggest that you try the uh, alternate way. But we're just going to work through this way. So we're going to let u equal cosine theta. That means that dv is e to the theta, d theta. And uh, what I can do is, now here it doesn't get simpler when you take the derivative. Uh, but at least you can take the derivative. It's no more complicated, really. And here you can integrate this, and you get e to the theta. So u is cosine theta, du is negative sine theta, d theta, dv is e to the theta, d theta, and v is e to the theta. So the integral then is uv minus v du. Now the minus here, uh, minus a minus is a plus. That's why we get that. But now you see this is fine. But we have to integrate by parts again here. Uh, I'm going to follow the same track, letting u equal sine of theta. That means that du is cosine theta d theta, and dv is equal to everything that was left. So it is e to the theta d theta, meaning v is, again, e to the theta. So this integral now is, I had this part, but now what I get is the new u, v minus v du. Now, you might say, well, we're going in circles, but I realize that here I have minus this term, which is the same as this term. And so I can add that to both sides, getting to the integral of e to the theta. Cosine theta d theta is just going to be this plus this. And if I divide by 2, then I have that the uh, indefinite integral of e to the theta cosine theta d theta is one-half e to the theta cosine theta plus e to the theta sine theta, one-half of all that, plus c. Uh, some students call this a boomerang thing where you integrating by parts, but you get something that you can add to both sides. This is a common technique. It is not the last time we will see this. Um, here's another example. We want to evaluate the following uh, integral. This is the definite integral. E uh, it is uh, indefinite integral of x to the fourth e to the x over 2 dx. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. 
Well, you could have integrated by parts four times, and if you did, good for you, especially if you get the right, correct answer, which is shown down here. But I'm going to show you, uh, since you see uh, what happens is there's a pattern here, and so with exponentials, um, we can start off choosing U and DV, but instead of doing it each time, we can do what is sometimes called tabular, uh, integration by parts. So what we're going to do is here we're going to take u and we keep taking the derivative of u till I get to zero. And here I'm going to take dv, or at least the, the uh, functional part of dv, and I start taking, um, I start doing integrals going down. And since the signs sig and s alternate in this case, I'm going to do plus, minus, plus, minus. So what you do is you will start here and you will multiply down. So it's x to the fourth times 2, e to the x over uh, 2, which is this term. Then it's going to be minus the next term, which is this term. And you see that's going to be 4 times 4 is 16x cubed. And that's e to the x squared. And that's going to be a plus and so on. And you can do all those multiplies and you can see that the diagonals in the table will give you the answer. Some students say, can I do this all the time? Well, in some instances, this will never terminate over here, like if you had sines and cosines, so you'd have to, have to know when to stop. Uh, I, but certainly for problems of this form, this is a very efficient way to do it, and my engineering students tend to love that. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math, it will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. We're all in this together. God bless you all.